This is Twit. I wonder how many of us grew up listening to that song and got into photography because of Paul Simon. Maybe quite a few. It's time for our photo segment with Chris Marquardt. He is a professional photographer, does a great podcast, many great podcasts, including Tips from the Top Floor, leads photographic workshops at discoverthetopfloor.com and joins us every week to help us enjoy photography better. Hi, Chris. Hi, Leo. How are you? I am great. It's great to have you on the show again. Well, uh, and the Kodak song um, reminds us that Kodak is still around. They still make film. They still do a few other things. And yeah, one thing that is... They're doing well, Bitcoin miners now. That, and that's actually what I want to talk about today. It's not crazy. really photography related. No, I want to talk about Kodak Coin. Have you heard of that? Yes. They announced this so, at CES. Is it not just yes. them jumping on the Bitcoin cryptocurrency bandwagon? P possibly. Possibly. Now, I, I just want to briefly... Can, I know people have probably seen this in the news somewhere and gone, what, what is, what is that thing? And I just, I just want to shed some light on what that actually could mean or what they might do, because there is not much information online. Um, the, at this point, it is pretty much just a promise. No, they have nothing built yet, at least nothing to show for it. Um, but they are they at are, least aiming this at photographers, right? Of course, of course, they they throwing around the blockchain thing, and people are all excited about blockchains, even though uh, no many don't really know what, what a blockchain is. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. <laughs> so what what they're doing, and this is a timely thing because um, I think in a couple of days they apply, they're they're planning to do what's called an ICO. It's like uh, if you have stock and you do an IPO, but just with a coin, so an ICO, initial coin offering. Completely so unregulated, I might coins. add. So as of with any is, yeah. unregulated financial activity, <laughs> let the buyer Of course beware. it is. And this, and this is no financial advice here, okay? Yes. <laughs> just making that, yes. making that very clear. Um, so what Kodak has done, they haven't really done anything, but they licensed their name to a company that uh, calls themselves Kodak One. I think that's, that's important uh, because Kodak went bankrupt. But they did, yes. they're still kind of around. This company, Kodak One, is in Rochester, where Kodak's famous headquarters was. But it's not the same company. It's not the same company. It's Kodak Alaris, which is, uh, is I think, their pension fund. But they are now also <laughs> making, still making films. So under the Kodak brand. Kodak has been... The Kodak label has been stuck on many things, and yeah. uh, one of those things is now this this Kodak coin. Now, what they what they claim they want to do is it's pretty much digital asset management. So we're talking See, about this is actually something management. much needed, right? Because, for instance, one of the problems photographers has people steal their photos and they post them on blogs and other places, and there's really no easy way to figure that out. Yes, and what what they what they will use is a blockchain. That's well, that. What they claim to use is a blockchain, and a blockchain in this context is pretty much just a, a ledger that all those photo ownerships are recorded on. So it's pretty much a, an, a book that has all those ownerships recorded on, the licensing terms recorded on. And as a photographer, you want to record your, your photo ownership on that blockchain, you'll have to use a token, and that uh -huh. token is called Kodakoin. So uh -huh. it, is, it is the thing that makes this work. Got it. Um, that fuels all this. You pay Kodak to, to you pay Kodak Coin to register something on that chain, and then someone else pays Kodak Coin if they want to license your photos ah. because they are now on that chain. And and you get some money if someone licenses your photos or some Kodak Coin. It's a market. That's what a blockchain is in this context. And they, they claim they want to expand this to more to photographers and venues and models and things. But in in general, that token can be used. And it can be traded. So it's a utility token. It has an actual use, but it's also an investment token. So you can buy these tokens in the ICO. You can, it's, it's like a Kickstarter pretty much for, for that thing. You put your trust into the success of that project and then you buy the tokens. Do you, do you and get ownership in anything if you buy uh, this ICO? I mean, is it like stock where you get some ownership in this company, well, or? it's not clear yet how they want to yeah, do this. There the are <laughs> there are others who do this based on an existing blockchain, like uh, for example, the Ethereum blockchain is very often used for <clears throat> for token. I know recording cases. artists uh, recording artists have sold records oh, yeah. using blockchain. If you oh, think yeah. of it as just a database, as a giant 
decentralized, and that's the key, no one company controls it, database that verifies the authenticity of the transaction. I think this is makes with a lot of sense. Kodak coin, with Kodak coin, even that is not clear to me yet. I don't, it's, it's not clear if this is really a decentralized database, if they want to keep control over it, or if they want to give up that control. Um, you have to, at this point, you have to put your trust into the success of that project. I, don't, I haven't seen a white paper yet. I haven't yeah. seen a proof of concept yet. Um, there is another project out there that I've uh, recently come across. It's called photochain.io. They want to do the exact same thing. They want to do license management, uh, create a license market. They have their own token. It's called Photon. Um, they have a working prototype, they have a white paper, they have, like, you can get on a Telegram channel and talk to their CEO, they're more accessible. I haven't seen that from Kodokan. So, again, I'm not giving advice here, I'm just uh, looked at these things and it's interesting. The other thing that Kodak or someone who licensed, licensed their name has done is uh, come up with a Bitcoin miner, a piece of hardware that mines Bitcoin you can and buy strange, it. You can buy this Well, box. you can rent. No, no, you can rent it. Oh, you don't it, even buy and then it. Oh. You get something back or not. And this thing, um, um, yeah, I haven't really looked that deep into it, but it didn't look very attractive to me. So the, the whole blockchain thing is definitely going to yield a few things in some areas. If it will do that for photography, I have no idea. Kodak, the name, I mean, the, the name is is it's a brand and it's a very well recognized brand people know kodak yeah but as with many brands and i'll include polaroid in this oh packard bell uh these brand names have outlived the companies in effect and now of they have, yeah. are being licensed to make you feel all warm and fuzzy but i don't know how much relationship they have to the original brands kodak is also selling a super 8 film camera for many thousands of dollars, it is and not. And they have, <laughs> and they have brought back the the film for it, Ektachrome for it. That I'm uh, I'm so in, in love with. Keep keep it's doing an, that. It's an interesting development there, but you're you're totally right. The the license deals that we see with, um, with Kodak, with German brands like Rolei, for example, you can you now get uh, Rolei the Rolle brand on a lot of things that don't look like any German engineer has ever touched them. Um, <laughs> so so we're, we're looking at a really strange thing. Do not just trust the name. No. Uh, if that, actually, anyone wants that is, to dig there are into two, that. There are two takeaways here. One is that, you know, be ca cautious because none of this is regulated. It's very fast moving. It's kind of a bubble right now. But the other side of it is legitimate. That there is a problem that needs to be solved, the rights, digital rights problem for photographers. And this might well be, blockchain is a really interesting technology that might be exactly the right technology to solve this. And in order to do a blockchain, you have to have some sort of proof of work. And for that reason, they're creating a coin that is, in effect, a proof of work. So I think it, all of this kind of makes sense. But you're right. We need to know a lot more before we can see and if, if anyone wants to invest, do do your due diligence. Make sure you look at um, what they have to offer, if they have to offer anything at all at this point. Yeah. Loquacious really has clear. written a new theme song. Coda coin, we bring you the <laughs> nice bright co coppers. I don't know. We'll have to work on that a little bit. <laughs> and in fact, uh, the chat room also suggested that uh, you and I start a new uh, blockchain-based uh, coin. We'll call it Ponzi coin. And, so uh, I think yeah. something like that already exists, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> there, it's very, it's hard to understand. The mathematics are complicated, uh, but and 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 unfortunately, when greed gets in the picture, there are, there are people who are out there to take your money. On the other hand, there are some very good, useful applications. This might well be one of them. We could find out more at Kodak.com. Thank you, Chris Marquardt. DiscoverTheTopFloor.com to find more of Chris's work and all about his workshops. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.